What's up YouTube? I hope you're all having an amazing week. If you're new here, my name is Danny James and in this particular video, we shall be taking you through various photo bus transitions that you can use to make your transitions. You might be asking, what are photo bus transitions? So you've seen them in most of the drill videos, in the music scene, hip hop videos. It's whereby you have a couple of photos coming in and then you transition with them onto the next scene. Now I'll show you about three variations which you can use and I think they'll really make your editing workflow good. If you're new here, kindly consider subscribing, give this video a like, and without further ado, let's jump right into it. I'll show you two examples which I used to come up with this tutorial. There are so many videos which have this sort of transition or effect, but I'll just show you two videos and then you shall jump right into Adobe Premiere and do this as fast as you can. So the first video is by DBlock and Central C. The editor transitions on the around 20th second. So you can see they are sort of like torn paper rips which have become sort of popular over the last couple of year or years so i think they're really cool and dope the second one is a video from mula juice nothing personal if you like hip-hop it's a really dope song the director uses it very well to transition a scene here around 30 second right here yeah you can see this sort of viewfinder transition which comes in and this will particularly require you to understand some concepts in Photoshop. I hope you can do that. So let's jump right into the video. On my timeline, I have a video which you shall use to emulate this and do the first variation. I have a drill bit which will help us give us better perspective as we transition here. Okay. So we're going to add a transition on this clip. Now, the first thing you want to do whenever you're shooting a video, you want to take a few photos of the artists, of the scenery, just take photos here and there. If you cannot do that, you can take screenshots from your video. This is what you're going to do in this video. You're going to take some screenshots from the main video. So I'll drag the main video into my timeline right here. I'll also give it a different label and then try to get the screenshots which you need. An easy method to take screenshots is right here on your program window. There is a little camera which is labeled export frame. If you cannot find it, go to the button editor and drag it right here. So that should be easy. Pick a few spots which you like, a few scenes which look dope. And then like somewhere here, I'll click on this camera. The images will go to my desktop and I'll drag them. I'll go to somewhere else. I'll take another screenshot. So I'll keep on doing this. Take about five photos. That's all you need. So once you have your screenshots, you can head over onto Photoshop. Now on Photoshop, what you need to do, just create a new file. Uh, we can work with a custom 1080 by 1080. This is a perfect square, so that should be okay. Drag it, and then you shall use a few paper rips to do this. Now I'll attach below in the description box a few that you can use for free and test out and do this. I'll also have a paid version which will consist of about 50 assets that you can also use. So feel free to choose whichever you want. I'll drag my images on my desktop. I'll drag the first picture right here. Okay, now I'll go to my asset files and grab that one. They are right inside my paper rips asset. So I'll use this one, which is short, drag it on top. The advantage you can rotate it uh, okay, let me just disable the background. Okay, now Control T. You can rotate it how you want. You can also enlarge it. If you're using a newer version of Photoshop, you need to hold Alt key or Option key in Mac. And then once it's the way you want, you can accept these changes. Now the trick here is to place that paper rip right beneath. And then on the picture which is above, right click and create a clipping mask so that this picture will only appear from the sections of this paper rip. Now you can enlarge the photo if you want, Control T. I can enlarge the photo if that's what I want. I can also rotate it. And then once you're done, you'll come back to your torn paper rip, create a mask, grab the brush tool. Now don't use the general brushes, just come here to the wet media brushes and grab the Kylie's Inkbox Classic Cartoonix. It's available in every Photoshop. So the advantage of using this one, it's, it's that while we try to remove the extra parts, it will leave that jittery feel uh, like a crumpled paper. So I'll do it along the edges. Now, 
since we created a clipping mask as long as we do anything on the layer below it will affect what's underneath so like right here i'll erase the rest and right below i'll also try to make it a bit organic so just click around also you can have your flow at a hundred percent you can change the size of your brush right here you can increase the size if you want to remove better so this should be our first slide now we shall do this with like four other photos i'll show you other tricks to make the crumpled paper a bit unique i'll create a new 1080 by 1080 file i'll drag my torn paper rip i'll put it here now before i drag the second image i want to show you a quick trick which you can do to make this paper rip a bit unique with other photos so Control T so that you can adjust it. Right click and then right here where it's written WAP, click here. And now you have these points which you can drag around. Now it will give us a different feel from the other one. Now if I drag in another photo. And then before you make any adjustments on the photo, try to right click here. And then create the clipping mask now you can hit ctrl t on that photo and enlarge it or however you want you can also rotate it and give it a feel which you like and then on the same thing we just did create a mask grab your brush tool i just hit b on my keyboard you can toggle between the foreground and background color using x Okay, that looks okay. So I'll do the same thing with another photo and I'll forward this part. Now afterwards, just export all of these and then bring them in into Adobe Premiere. Also remember, while you try to export, you need to export a PNG file and not a JPEG. So create a new folder, just name these ones Photo Burst. And then I can name them 101, bring in the other one. Before you export, you also want to disable your, the layer which is right underneath so that you can have a transparent file. Like right here, I'll disable this so that you can actually read a png so that you can have that transparent background so don't forget that's a really important step make sure to remove the view for the background layer or you can also delete it and then you can drag all of your files into your timeline right here you want to space them by about five frames hold shift right arrow key five frames and then the second photo can appear also make sure to use a full view and then you want to stack them like a staircase sort of and drag this and then whenever a second photo comes in space about five frames to come here correctly and then let all of them end in one place so we'll try to preview this off rip and see what it looks like without any adjustments i'll play the audio yeah it looks okay but it can have a little bit of spicing so what we shall do we shall scale these items let me also give them a different label color okay i'll try to to scale it a bit you can also rotate it and then just position it wherever you feel like it doesn't have to be central or to the right and then the second one click on it scale it up you can rotate it you can move it around or drop it and then the third one do the same thing scaling and then let's move it to the left hand side and then this other one scale it again you can also copy the attributes i'm just trying to do the long method so whatever it is the positioning should should look aesthetically pleasing whenever they are in one frame at once uh, they don't have to have the same scaling you can have different variations of that scaling uh, like this one i'll make it a bit smaller yeah so let's see how, how they look yeah that's quite okay
and then just to add some sauce you can add an overlay right beneath everything i'll drag a quick overlay from my asset files i'll drag this one into, into the project bin i mean and then i'll take the first few seconds right here just something that can that can interrupt the blackness and then drag it i'll give it a different label rose a rose maybe and then make it short and drag it beneath everything else so that whenever they come they have something playing now for the last step which you can do for this you can add an adjustment layer create an adjustment layer here then drag it up okay make it to occupy that space you go to your effects look for a noise add it on the adjustment layer put a noise of about 8 to 15 percent should look okay and now it should add something good now i also went uh, a step further to make it more dope now what you can do just come to your windows and then get to your lumetri panels which are right here under the basic corrections you can do whatever you want you can increase the exposure to give it a different feel from everything else now whenever you increase the exposure and also have noise in the same clip it looks vintage so don't forget to do that you can also reduce the saturation so that they don't have so much color just a bit yeah if you are creative like me i went into my curves and right under hue and hue you can create like three spots and then you can increase one you can also reduce it and you should be able to see the difference in one yeah like here you can see it has changed let me let me put it up yeah it adds a little bit of variation to your photos and remember you don't really have to have this overlay which is underneath it just adds a layer of interest so let's play this back i bet it looks dope That is really simple you can see the small the minor adjustments that we just did made everything look dope so increase the exposure desaturate the clip play around with the curves just give it a different feel from the rest of the video and that's how you do a simple photo bus transition now i'll show you a second variation it will be easier to do it so i have a video here if you watched my last tutorial i did an effect from dusty locaine's video if you haven't watched make sure to check it out now what you shall do in this case we shall transition into this scene you'll do the same thing which, you, which we have done before you'll take screenshots from your main video so specifically with this one what i'll do i'll know where i want to transition let's say it's right at this point i'll make that cut also at the point where you make the cut make sure to take a screenshot send it to your desktop wherever it is now make sure to create some space whereby you'll bring in your photos you can take about four other screenshots from the video so i'll do that right now uh i think we have sufficient screenshots now i'll delete that footage from here and we're coming to do the transition here right about here so we shall transition from here and then into this scene the other variation which i was talking about i've created a pack of vintage viewfinder elements which you can use this is what they look like they look really vintage i had to customize some of them uh, use a bit of photoshop and that so we can choose whichever we want to use from here just open your photoshop on these frames right click on it open with photoshop now you can see it has two transparent layers i can also open another one now let's say this one here open with photoshop and you can see it has this transparent layer so from this one we'll drag two photos from the screenshots we took so drag them onto your photoshop enlarge them how you want like this one i'll put it here and this other one i'll put it right beneath here so if you want a, a unique transition i'd suggest using these ones in this example we shall not be creating clipping mask instead we shall be dragging this layer up above everything else 
now you can see our photos look really good now you can also customize where you want your photos to be and then from here you just export these as a jpeg now for this other second one uh, remember i showed you about five of them which have been custom made you can just drag your photo and do something so i'll drag another screenshot right here and enlarge it like that and then remember to put this layer above it remember you can also do uh, several images with the same one so i'll drag about two other images i'll drag these two other images on this one i shall also enlarge them and then uh, the drill should be the same now you just export them individually so as it as it looks i'll go to file export as a jpeg and then it's always advisable to create a new folder just for organization dusty locan uh we need it to be a jpeg just a normal picture yeah it will come here so let's name these 201 now once it exports just hide that layer export the second one the second slide and name it 202 and then i'll hide that layer and then there's the last one which is here export 203 and then we had this one which had double double frames so i'll just export it now once you're done with photoshop just come back to your adobe premiere and drag your folder right here now we shall do the same thing drag these layers here and then create the staircase model and ensure that the photo which transitions into the other scene is the last one so i'll enlarge right here and then again create your staircase model make sure it's about five frames and then the other one and then also here five frames drag the other one so that should be good and then drag the video here let's see if it matches up it comes from here 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 and then it goes on to the video let's uh, do the basic motion controls you can scale this up you can drag it wherever you want you can also rotate it as i showed you i'll place that on there and then the second frame just click here put it wherever you want remember you can also add keyframes for position whatever you want and then keep doing your thing i'll rotate this one a bit or i'll also scale it up you can do whatever you want it's creativity creativity is flow just do whatever you like and then the last frame which is right here I'll scale it up and then ensure the picture with the cheek stays right here beneath and then i'll place this one centrally so they should come in like this let's play this back yeah yeah that's basically it you can do whatever you want to do since these ones are occupying the entire frame now i'll adjust maybe this the scaling of this one and make sure that it stays on top and then these other ones i'll make sure that they occupy the rest of the screen from the sides yeah like this one yeah so it's what makes sense to your eyes but at the end of the day creativity is whatever you do so if i play this back And that's basically it that's how you can do a proper photo burst transition in all your videos i hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and i hope you get to learn something from it if you have any questions kindly write them on the description box and i'm happy to interact with you guys my name is danny james see you in the next video cheers